Hi, I'm Sofia, you're watching Paralego, and in this video you can find out how you can make a pyramid crochet clutch bag. It's very unique and very easy, so stay tuned! Supplies list 140 meters of polyamide macrame cord, a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, a zipper, A metal hook handle, an O ring with an inward opening, needle and thread for sewing, some pins, a pair of scissors, and also a stitch marker and a darning needle which I forgot to film. We will start with a slip knot. Wrap the end of the yarn around your index to form an X. Insert your hook under the yarn, grab the outer limb of the X and draw a loop. Pull the end of the yarn to tighten your knot and pull the other end to bring it close to your hook. Now we will chain 65. We will yarn over and pull a loop. Again yarn over and pull a loop and again yarn over and pull a loop and so on and so on until we complete 65 chains finishing our last chains and that's the 65th now we will fold our chain without twisting it and we will insert our hook into the very first chain this one so we will insert our hook we will yarn over and we will pull through both loops on our hook in a slip stitch and we will chain one we will insert our hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull a loop, yarn over again, and pull through both loops on our hook. That was a single crochet. We will do the same into the next chain. Insert our hook, yarn over, pull a loop, yarn over again and pull through both loops on our hook. We will continue like this, placing one single crochet in each chain until the end of our chains. Almost reached the start of the round. Completing the last single crochet. And to start the next round, we will insert our hook into the chain we made after our slip stitch, right here. We will yarn over, pull a loop, and pull one loop through the other in a slip stitch. Pull your yarn tight, and here starts our pattern. In the next stitch, we will place a single crochet. And we will place a stitch marker to mark this first stitch of the round. In the next stitch we will place a waistcoat stitch. In other words, we will place a single crochet not in the usual place, but in this little V that forms between two single crochet stitches. Here's the usual place and here's the little V. So we will insert our hook into that V we will yarn over, pull a loop, yarn over again and pull through both loops on our hook. And that was our first waistcoat stitch. We will repeat the previous two stitches, first one single crochet and then one waistcoat stitch. Let's get closer. We will insert our hook into the V, yarn over, pull a loop, yarn over again and pull through both loops on our hook. 
and we will repeat the pattern one single crochet in the next stitch and one waistcoat stitch in the following and so on and so on we will continue the same pattern until the end of the round almost finished this second round counting the one with a single crochet as the first and here please note that every round must end with the same stitch that started otherwise something went wrong so here our last stitch is a single crochet because our round started with a single crochet finally we will remove the stitch marker the next round we'll start by placing a waistcoat stitch into the first single crochet of the previous round we will now place our stitch marker into this first stitch of the round and our next stitch will be a single crochet placed on top of the first waistcoat stitch of the previous round then we will place a waistcoat stitch into the second single crochet of the previous round and then a single crochet placed on top of the second waistcoat stitch of the previous round in other words we reversed the order of our two stitches and we will continue this reversed pattern a waistcoat stitch followed by a single crochet until the end of the round so we reached the end of this third round and again our last stitch should be the same with our first which in this case was a waistcoat stitch and it looks that everything went smooth we will remove our stitch marker and the order of our stitches will be reversed again meaning that our first stitch will be a single crochet which we will make sure to mark placed on top of the first waistcoat stitch of the previous round consequently our next stitch will be a waistcoat stitch placed into the first single crochet of the previous round and we will continue this pattern a single crochet followed by a waistcoat stitch until the end of the round we will go on repeating the second and third round until we complete 30 rounds here we are finishing the 30th round and we will cut our yarn leaving a long tail of about two meters our work should look like a square now we will turn the inside out we will bring out the tail and we will fold our piece neatly so that our stitch marker will be at the top right corner of our work now we will join the two sides by slip stitching the back loops of the two sides together we place the first slip stitch at the edge without joining the two sides together 
And now we'll have a closer look. Insert your hook into the back loop of the front side and into the back loop of the closest stitch of the back side. Yarn over and pull through both loops. Let's watch this again. We will continue like this, slip stitching the two sides together until we reach the left corner of our work. Almost there, placing the last slip stitches, now cut your yarn and fasten off. Weave in the tail. Use your sewing thread and needle to place some stitches at the end of the yarn to prevent frilling. Now turn your work inside out again. Fold the edges neatly so that the seam will go at the back of your work. Turn your work on the side and fold it again so that the corners will align in the center. This is very important, so make sure to fold it carefully. And here is where we will attach the zipper. But before that, we have one more tail to weave in at the bottom of our work. You could also use your darning needle if it suits you best. Sew the end to avoid frilling. And you're set. Now let's get back to the zipper. Use some pins to fix the zipper in place.
and do the same for the other side. When you're done, start sewing the zipper to your work with a simple back stitch. Go twice in the beginning to secure your thread. If your zipper is longer, like mine, hide the excess at the inside of your work. It's best to go twice in the corner to make sure your zipper is secure. Continue like this to the other side. Again, go twice in the end. Sew the tails of the zipper together. And hide them at the inside of your work. Make sure to sew them to your work to avoid them getting in the way of the zipper. And we're done with the zipper. Now fold your work so that the ends of the zipper will align in the center. Nice and neat. Locate the two middle stitches under the end of your zipper, the end where the closure will be when the zipper is zipped up, and use your hook to slightly loosen them. Take your O-ring and insert it under the two stitches, like this. And here comes the magic part. Press the lips of your zipper so that they will meet and zip it up.
さら。Slightly fold the edges. And finally, insert the hook handle into the O ring. And it's ready. My beloved viewers, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, share, and make a comment. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and click on the bell to get notice for our new videos. And don't forget to visit paraligo.com. Until next time, take care. Mwah.